More than 40,000 people in King County are immigrants and refugees who were born in East Africa. Many of them share stories like Awali's. Keep your head down. Don't cause a stir. Don't ruin this dream. But those attitudes are changing, driven in part by a momentous 2020. My mom or grandma is not likely to be outside in the streets protesting, but I know I am. Hamdi Mohammed is a community organizer whose family fled civil war in Somalia in 1993 when she was a toddler. That violence scarred her parents' generation. A different kind of turmoil is shaping hers. When the death of George Floyd happened, I know my anxiety was high, so high that week. I was worried about my husband. I was worried about my nephews. I called and I checked on them. I told them about their rights. I told them how they should engage with police officers. Mohammed says she and other younger black immigrants are increasingly marching, protesting, advocating, and voting as they grow and gain a deeper understanding of the forces working against them. As newcomers, people who are you know, immigrating to this com country or coming here as refugees, they're not given any sort of classes or information about what it means to be a black person in the United States. They kind of figure this out on their own. Yeah, you figure it out on your own. There is a dark history in this country that has oppressed folks who look like myself. A lot of immigrants and refugees do not come with that sort of understanding, so it takes it takes time understanding that and understanding what institutional racism is. I have had conversations with my older aunties, um, with our community members um, who, you know, might not even speak English very well and who are very new newcomers to the United States and understand what is happening. They see the patterns, right? They're, they're seeing unarmed black men being killed over and over again. And, you know, they're able to make that connection to what is happening and understanding that there are institutions and systems built to work against black and brown folks. The rights I enjoy in the United States was done by the blood of African Americans who put their life on the line for me to enjoy this. Awali Farah says it was only in recent years that he felt comfortable opening up about his experiences and participating in the mechanisms of change. I will bring your voices to the city hall. Last year, he ran for Kent City Council, pushing for increased access to public transit and affordable housing. We need to be visible, we need to speak, we need to um, be part of the solution to make this country better than it is today. Immigrants like Farah and Mohammed came to the U.S. escaping war and governments that don't tolerate activism. As Americans, they say they feel a sense of duty to challenge the embedded historical racism here and the new reality of racism for them. We are impacted by racial profiling. We are impacted by all of these different issues that um, our African-American brothers and sisters have been fighting for for decades. We have so much to contribute so for us not to say something is a disservice to the essence of being American. 